issue of the boards and commissions, Linda McClure. Thank you. I'm Linda McClure with Service Employees Union, and I just want to stress the importance of the Civil Service Commission. Uh, currently, there are three members on it, and that effectively makes the board uh, unable to carry out business. Uh, there was a meeting uh, last month that um, they're, they couldn't get a second on a motion, and therefore the person lost their appeal. And I have said, and, and these, this is the commission that hears appeals on classification issues, on discipline that results in a loss of wages, including termination. We have several termination hearings that are waiting, and I won't take any more to the commission until they are, until it's a full commission. Um, and that means people who have been terminated for an extended period of time are waiting for their hearing. Um, if, if they are reinstated, there'll be back pay issues that keep mounting. Uh, so I just really encourage people to, um, to fill those positions. It really hampers the operation of the county uh, in, in that um, jurisdiction. Thank you. Supervisor Brown. Yes, um, I appreciate those comments very much. Um, all individuals are welcome if they see empty um, appointments to be able to submit um, their names um, to the clerk of the board to be considered in any of the districts on any of the boards or commissions. And I want to tell you, I thought I had an individual that would be excellent uh, for civil service commission. And because of the hours and the times that the meetings take place, was unable to give that much time. I do have another individual that is interested, so I will be pursuing that. And I hear you. We need to function. And we need to function as a county. And that is a key commission for appointments. Yes, thank Supervisor you. Supervisor Smith. Oh. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. McClure, I, I uh, fully understand your comments and concur with Supervisor Brown. I know it's an important, um, it's a very important appointment. I've been working diligently to try to figure out someone from a distant part of the county to participate. So I have gotten into, for different reasons, a couple dead ends. Those individuals didn't work out. Uh, so I'm continuing to work on that. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks, hopefully, uh, by the time we meet again, I'm really hoping that I'll have a, a very positive uh, uh, person to recommend for that, for that position. So thank you. Thank you. Adrian. Yes, excuse me, I just wanted to mention that the application of interest is on the clerk of the board's website. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we got a couple of public uh, members of the audience want to speak, and then we'll go ahead, take a five minute break, and then come back for our presentation for emergency services. Okay. Um, James Howell. James, you want to. Who? We're not going to have uh, his presentation. After we take a five minute break, but you can go ahead and make your. Uh, we're not going to have. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a five minute break. And then we're going to come back for the emergency services presentation. That's that's when he wants okay. to speak. Oh, you want under after the you want to speak next after agenda. the presentation? Well, let me. I make thought my maybe comment. you didn't want to wait. Let me make so my comment. Sure, no, that's probably yeah. a better idea. I think so. Uh, my name is James Houle, Redwood Valley. I wanted to speak on Ordinance 4168, which was passed back in 2006, and. Uh, suggest that you reconsider this entire ordinance. Uh, the reason being basically that it's against the ideal of an open government. Uh, first off, it puts in charge of the emergency services uh, a director who uh, is an unelected official. He is an official that is not directly answerable to the public. And uh, he's, by his performance, shown himself to be quite unresponsive to public criticism. Uh, and fourthly, he's not subject to recall. This puts this man in a tremendously powerful position, should we have an emergency. It makes me quite nervous. 
We have a uh, sheriff who is a elected official. He's quite well known. We've seen his face. We know his philosophy of government. He's spoken to us many times about this. We know something about this man. He's not only that, but he's, uh, he's subject to recall, and he uh, has a trained staff in place to take over emergency services. Furthermore, he's taken the FEMA training uh, that uh, is provided by the federal government. Uh, this man uh, should be in charge. Perhaps he'd like to make the uh, CEO as his assistant. That's uh, uh, up to you people. But uh, I request that you uh, give serious consideration to this. We're, we're getting into dire straits in this country. And uh, having this type of a regulation on the books uh, is, a not, is a dangerous thing. So I request that you uh, give further thought to the whole matter. Thank you. Thank you. Is it, is it who? Is your name pronounced who? Who. Who, thank you. Okay. Uh, Richard Johnson. Good morning, supervisors. Normally, Mr. Mr. Johnson, Johnson we're I'm speaking today. Mr. Jo Mr. Johnson, normally our public expression is at 9.05 in the morning on items not on the agenda. Thank you, sir. So. If I'm not here at 9.05, then I have to wait until you call me. So I thank you for calling me. Okay. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Voters Union, and I'm going to recommend that you instruct your county council to request the uh, Ukiah City Police and the District Attorney investigate Jim Wattenberger for violations of the Penal Code in respect to carrying a loaded weapon, possibly carrying a loaded weapon into these board chambers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these chambers are a sacred space. We have to come here in peace to uh, agree, disagree, argue back and forth, but never to threaten. Uh, especially not physically threaten each other. And the old days, uh, the old west, the bar room required the patrons to check their weapons at the door. That wasn't done here. Uh, Supervisor Wattenberger has reduced this room, these chambers, into something less secure than an old west bar room. Did he break the law? Well, I'm not a lawyer. The sheriff said, this is America. Anybody can carry a weapon if they feel threatened. That's what he told me. However, uh, Penal Code Section 12025, uh, carrying an unregistered weapon uh, is without, uh, carrying an unregistered concealed weapon is punishable by a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. Uh, penal Code 12025C, Peace officer may arrest with probable cause anyone they uh, feel is uh, carrying a weapon. Supervisor Wattenberger publicly announced he was carrying a concealed weapon or had carried one in the final uh, uh, days of his uh, tenure in office at a workshop at which all the department heads were seated around a big table. And among his final acts was to say, I hate to admit it, but I was carrying a weapon. He asked. Uh, he then uh, said, or intimated, or he said, uh, I know there's at least one supervisor here who's glad, I, who is glad that I am, or I did carry a weapon. He looked to you, uh, Supervisor Pinches. You and he traded jokes back and forth. Well, I don't know, uh, Jim, if, what kind of a shot you are. There was a lot of nervous laughter at that point, hysterical nervous laughter. Uh, County Council Nadal, you were there. And, um, and so was Undersheer. Under Sheriff Hudson, who also laughed uproariously in, in nervous laughter. This man may have that gun right now. If anybody criticizes him, will he open fire? Penal Code 12031A, guilty of carrying a loaded weapon on his or her person in a public place in an incorporated city. Uh, Subchapter F, uh, if that gun is unregistered, it's